Without a lot of expensive tools, it can be a challenge to replace the joysticks in a controller. So it'd be nice to know a joystick is working correctly before installing it. I thought I would go over how to test a joystick to ensure it is working properly. I'll focus on the Hall and TMR type sensors, but the same can be applied to a potentiometer based joystick as well. There are only two tools needed to test a joystick, a multimeter and a power supply, and the wires to connect them. The fact that you are getting ready to replace the joysticks, I will assume you have a soldering iron. And if you have a soldering iron, you probably have a multimeter. But if you are watching this, you probably don't have an adjustable power supply. We need a minimum of 1.8 to a maximum of 5 volts to power the Hall or TMR sensor. So I'm going to use two AA batteries as a power supply. If you do have an adjustable power supply, then by all means use it and skip the next section. I have two AA batteries, but I need to connect them together. I also have two AA battery holders. You can get these single AA holders or two battery AA holders from Amazon. I have these so I'm going to use them. If you don't have any battery holders and order some, you might as well order the two battery holder. Make life easier. But with the single battery holders, I will need to connect the positive lead, the red wire of one holder, to the negative lead, the black wire of the other holder. These are brand new batteries so I should end up with a little over 3 volts. And it looks like 3.187 volts to be exact. But that's with no load. Well. The tiny amount of load the meter is putting on the batteries. Now with these items I can test a joystick and make sure it is functioning. I will put the meter in the volts DC range. I'll be using some hook clip test leads to connect to the joystick pin. If you don't have any and are just testing a couple of joysticks, you can solder a wire directly to the joystick pin. But if you're doing more than two or three, I would suggest getting a set. It will speed things up a lot. The meter negative lead will connect to the battery negative wire. That will be the common point of reference. I will check the battery voltage to make sure my negative leads are connected. Hooking the meter's positive lead to the positive battery wire, I have my 3.18 volts, so all is good. I'm going to use the red hook clip as the positive supply to the joystick, so it gets connected to the positive wire of the batteries, the 3.18 volts. The first joystick I'm going to look at is the Ghoulie Kit TMR. I consider it the best all around joystick available. The negative lead gets connected to the left sensor pin and the positive lead gets connected to the pin on the right. I will connect the blue hook clip to the center pin, the output of the sensor. I will double check the supply voltage. Still 3.18 volts, so good to go. I will then connect the meter's positive lead to the blue hook clip lead, which is the output of the sensor. So I have a center reading of 1.51 volts. Half the supply voltage of 3.18 volts would be 1.59 volts. As long as the center reading is within 20% of 1.59 volts, it should work. And this is well within that. In the DualSense controller, I'm testing what would be the up-down axis, and I'm moving the joystick to what would be the up position, and the output voltage from the sensor should move towards zero volts. And it does. Goes down to about 140 millivolts. It's very good that it is reading about the same voltage every time I move the joystick into what I hope is the same position. And when I move the joystick to what would be the down position, the output voltage should move toward the positive supply value. And again it does. Moves up to 2.95 volts. And it's very repeatable. So very good. If the voltage reading is not consistent when you move it to the same position, and when I say consistent I would say less than an 80 millivolt difference from a previous reading, that may be an indication of a mechanical problem with the joystick. If it is consistent then I would write down the three values, center, up and down, then I would let the joystick sit there powered up for maybe an hour. This would be sort of a burn in test. Then recheck the values. With time and temperature, there might be a few millivolt difference, but if there is a drastic change, there is a problem. As an example, say the up position voltage changed 200 millivolts. It read 140 at first, but after an hour, it's reading 340 millivolts. 
that axis has a problem and you don't want to use that joystick. Here is a Genful V5S joystick. Its up position reading is around 550 millivolts. And down position around 2.63 volts. The voltages are a lot different than the previous joystick, but it's not the absolute value that is so important. If you subtract the 2.63 volts from the 3.18, you get around 550 millivolts. So this axis of the joystick gets to within 550 millivolts of the negative voltage rail and within 550 millivolts of the positive voltage rail. I believe it is the balance that will indicate good circularity. I don't think you will find too many as balanced as this one. I had to pick through a few to find one. At this 3.18 volts, if the difference between the low value and zero volts and the high value and the supply voltage is less than 300 millivolts, I believe you will have a good joystick. Here is a Favor Union Hall Effect joystick and its output is a little different. With it connected, I've got a supply voltage of 3.17 volts. Remember that value. So in the up position, the output goes down to zero. That one millivolt reading on the meter can't be relied on. And in the down position, it goes to 3.17 volts. Now from what I previously said, you might think this is the perfect output balance. It's not. The large magnet in these is saturating the output of the sensor because of the over travel of the joystick. When any of these joysticks are mounted in a controller, the case of the controller limits the movement of the joystick shaft. So I can't really use this to tell how balanced the output of this axis is. This one would have to be installed on faith and hope. We can also tell a bit about how well the joystick will return to center. Here is the Ghoulie Kit TMR joystick again. If I move the joystick in one direction, let it return to center and record the value, and then move it in the opposite direction, let it return to center and record the value, and then repeat that a few times, I will get two limit values. The upper value for this one looks to be 1.65 volts and the lower around 1.50 volts so a 150 millivolt center range. Most of my previous center testing of the joysticks has been at 1.8 volts. I wish I would have kept a record of all the values, but I didn't. It seemed to me most of the time the center range would be in the 50 to 100 millivolt range, but that is at a supply voltage of 1.8 volts. If a joystick had less than a 40 millivolt center range, I would consider it exceptional. And if it was over 120 millivolts, well, it was the opposite of exceptional and I wouldn't use it. That 50 to 100 millivolts at 1.8 volts would be about 88 to 177 millivolts at 3.18 volts. So the 150 millivolt center range of this one is average, I would say. Now to make the exceptional point, I have here the new Genful V5S joystick with the increased stick tension with an upper limit of 1.65 volts and a lower limit of 1.64 volts, the center return range is fantastic. Would be like six, maybe seven millivolts at 1.8 volt supply. These joysticks have the best center return range I've ever measured by far. The cost for this seems to be a noticeably greater force to move the shaft. The centering test can be quite useful if you're looking for the tightest center spot you can get. If you take a lot of 10 joysticks, you will find quite a bit of difference between them. One thing you will probably notice is the up-down axis of the joystick usually have a bit worse center range than the left-right. That's not always the case, but if you pick the two best up-down axis joysticks from the lot, you will likely have the two best left-right axes as well. Can save a bit of time testing. About the difference between the low value and zero volts and the high value and the supply voltage being as balanced as possible, I don't believe it is the balance voltage itself that helps with the circularity. What I think is the balance voltage is an indicator, a sign that the axis output is possibly more linear. And it is the linearity of the axis output that makes for a very accurate circle. That is my theory anyway. 
Hopefully these tests will help you pick out the best of the joysticks in the lot. At least it should spot a defective one before it's installed. Thank you for watching.